Well, God is so good. Well, we're, we're in a month, this month, I decided to turn my message from last Sunday, Healing Sunday, to a healing month. Is that okay? And uh, really, uh, it's all about healing and deliverance. It's about freedom. Somebody say freedom. freedom. And God wants us walking in freedom. Do you believe that? And, uh, and we got to walk in freedom. And uh, we started out last week, and, I, and the, the title of my sermon is Healing Forces. And there's spiritual forces that we can walk in to walk in the freedom that God desires us to walk in. Amen? And I, and I talked about the first spiritual force, and that's faith. Somebody say faith. faith. And faith is a key. If you're going to activate uh, God's blessings on your life, if you're going to activate His grace, you're going to have to act in faith, walk in faith. And faith is a key. I, I, I hit on uh, some scriptures last week, and just a little recap, uh, in Hebrews eleven six. 6, it says, But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I love this scripture, one of my favorite scriptures about faith because faith uh, reveals the fact that God is, that he exists, but not only that he exists, but he is a good God. Somebody say God is a good God. And God is a rewarder. God is in the rewarding business. And, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul says that he's, you know, he was pressing towards a mark of the high prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He was always pressing in to the will of God in his life. And he was doing this to, to receive a crown. You know, that, that God's going to give gifts out on that final day of Judgment Day. Amen. We're all going to be standing at the judgment seat of Christ. And that is a, a judgment seat where God's going to, you know, judge us on how we lived our life down here. And, he, and then he's going to give out gifts. Amen. And so he is a, say God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder. So, so our faith is a belief that God exists. He's good and that he rewards us. Amen. And so we have to believe that, that God is good. And so faith really activates the grace of God to move us in a wonderful place in Him. So, so, so faith activates God's grace. And God's grace is His power to bring us into that place that we want to get to. That place is, uh, that grace is His power to, to, to set us free, to, to, to do amazing things in our life. So we, we, we see here God's grace empowers. Look at Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. This is really powerful. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we see here, it's by grace through faith. So what comes first, faith or grace? Grace comes first. I'm going to say that again. What comes first, grace or faith? A lot of people think, oh, it's faith. No, God's grace gives us faith. Amen. And then our faith receives God's grace. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody today. God's grace, see, what? it was by God's grace that you came to church today. It was by God's grace. But your, your faith responded to His grace. So your faith says, I'm going. So your faith is action. You act it on what you believe that if you come to church, that maybe something good might happen. That maybe there's a blessing involved. But maybe, maybe God's marking a star in heaven for us showing up. Glory to God. A gold star. Amen. And God notices everything that we do. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourselves with other believers as some are. So in the last days, some people will not be going to church. But, but we're not going to stop. See, I'm not stopping. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep coming. Like I say many times, if you just show up, you'll beat 90% of the people. If you just show up, amen? And so we see here that, you know, we, we know that Matthias, he was the 12th man. And remember, uh, Judas, he uh, betrayed Jesus, and he was one of the 12. 
But Matthias, and there was another guy, I can't even remember his name, they were picking between these two who was going to be the 12th apostle of the Lamb. And Matthias, because he showed up, he became the 12th apostle. So what am I saying? God is looking to promote some people. God's looking to, to elevate some people. And he's looking to elevate you. Do you believe that today? So, so it's not really, let me just say this today, that it's not how big your faith is that's going to set you free. It's really the bigness of God's grace to deliver you from whatever is ailing you. Can I say that again? It's not the bigness of your faith. It's the bigness of God. Can I get a witness in the house today? Because see, see when, when, when David, when, when he was encountering Goliath, and you might be encountering a Goliath today. Maybe you're dealing with something in your life. Maybe it's financial Maybe it's a loved one that you're believing God to do something in their life. Maybe it's your kids. Whatever, it is, whatever that Goliath is, when, when David faced Goliath, he didn't boast on his ability to sling a slingshot. No, he boasted in God. He said, my God shall deliver you into my hands. So I'm going to say this, that, that our God can deliver you from anything and deliver your family. Now I'm, now I'm going somewhere this morning. And can de deliver your family members, glory to God. And can deliver people that you come in contact with. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. And it, it, it's God's grace that it, it will see the miracles results, amen? Uh, so miracle results, it uh, comes through, through, through faith and that grace comes in. Jesus actually says just have faith in God. So really, the key to faith is having faith in God. He said that when he cursed the fig tree. He said, have faith in God and speak to the mountain. Faith speaks. Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to say this to you today. If you have faith, you're going to start speaking. Now, I'm not going to say faith doesn't speak circumstances. Faith always speaks the end result. Amen. 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 Can, can, I get a, can I get a witness in the house today? See, see God called Abraham... He changed his name from Abram to Abraham, and Abraham means father of many nations. I hit on it last week. God called Abraham a father of many nations before he had the promised son Isaac. But, but in God's mind, he already was a father of many nations. We're part of Abraham's seed. Say, I'm part of Abraham's seed. And we have the promise of the blessing uh, of Abraham. We have Abraham's blessing on our life. Say, I have Abraham's blessing on my life. Say, I believe that. I love that. So, 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 so God's grace, we're walking under God's grace today. And God's grace really uh, empowers us to walk in the blessing, if I may. And in Romans 6, 14, it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. You could substitute that word sin for sickness, bondage, and poverty. It cannot dominate you. Mm. Amen. Because that word dominion, you could break that word dominion down. It should, sin should not have dominion. But under the category of sin, that could be the category of sickness, poverty, or whatever is ailing you cannot, cannot dominate you. In other words, you cannot be dominated by the world forces that come against us. Amen. Say, I cannot be dominated. Amen. Somebody say, I am dominating. I am dominated. Yes, amen. amen. And you are dominating in this life. The Bible says, you shall reign like kings in this life. How many people today are ruling and reigning in this life? How do you do that? Through decreeing some things. You're decreeing some things. I'm decreeing Exceed Life Church is growing abundantly. Yeah. Yes, amen. Internally and externally. Yes, amen. So you got to grow internally before you grow externally. Yes, Can I get a witness in the house today? And God's growing us. In other words, we're becoming more Christ-like every day. Somebody say, I'm becoming more Christ-like every day. Amen. So, so, so faith opens the door of God's grace, his power to set us free. I want to focus you on the second force, if I can call it a force. 
a spiritual force that can set us free. And that spiritual force, can anybody tell me what it is? Love. We just talked about faith. Now it's a spiritual force called love. You know, the Bible says that these th three things will abide. Do you know what's going to abide after everything is gone? Faith, hope, and love. That's what the Bible says. In, 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 in faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is what? Love. love. See, see, faith cannot even operate, I'm preaching to somebody today, without love being involved in it. Because faith only operates through love. Love is the engine behind our faith. Love is a motivating force. Amen. Can I get a witness and I'll say, love motivates us. What does it motivate us to do? Go to church. Amen. What does it motivate us to do? Give into the offering. Yeah. What does it motivate us to do? Help people. Amen. It's a motivational force. Love is a motivational force. It motivates us to serve God and to serve people. So love is paramount in walking in any kind of healing or deliverance or freedom. There is one place in the Bible that the Apostle Paul reveals why some believers get sick and die even in, 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 the, you know, in the prime of their lives. And it's in 1 Corinthians and Paul is writing to the Corinthian church and What's amazing about this Corinthian church was that not only they, they operated in the gifts of the Spirit, they operated in the power of God, but they were immature. <laughs> they weren't too mature in their walk with Christ. They, they, were, they, they, they were prideful. The Corinthian church, see, see, if you walk in some gifts, sometimes that can cause you to get prideful. We got to make sure this is the key. Love, the, the key to love is humility. Is being humble. So, so, so pride is, is, the, is the key to, it's not the key to love. Pride is, the big word in pride is I, I. So, so, so here, Paul is ministering to them, and he's given instructions in 1 Corinthians 11, 17 through 19. He says, now, given these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, as in part I believe it, for there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, is not to the Lord's Supper, for in eating each takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What do you not have houses to eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. So Paul is writing this letter to reprimand the Corinthian church. And really, how you know, let, let me break it down to today. That how they did church a lot of times was they would come together and they would have a love feast. Amen. They would have a meal. Remember when Jesus, when he did communion, before he did communion... Before he, he, he did the communion, he, they ate a meal. And so a lot of times church, when they came together, they came together to eat. Then they would have some testimonies. They would read some scriptures. Then they would have communion. And so what people were doing is they were coming in with their own food. People would come in with no food. And they didn't care about the people that were coming in with no food. And they were just hoarding it for themselves. And so they weren't thinking about other people. And so if you're going to walk in, and, and Paul says, hey, th this isn't right. When you come in, either eat before you get there, or if you're not going to come in willing. See, if you bring some food into an Exceed Life Church and you bring it in front of other people, you better be ready to share. Amen. Don't be eating in front of us. In other words, you've got to be willing to share what you have. Glory to God. Does anybody have that type of heart? When you have something good, you want to share it with somebody? Amen. And then Paul said that they, they started taking communion in an unworthy manner. And it says here that many are weak and sick and sleep, which they die early. And so why? Because they're not discerning the body of Christ. So, so we need to be discerning the body. What does that mean? 
We need to be discerning what Jesus did on the cross for us, that he paid the price, not just to wash our sins away, which is a big part of salvation, but it's also to heal our bodies. So Jesus died to wash our sins away and heal our bodies, but he gave his life for us. So really, we need to be walking in love. Look at your name and say, walk in love. Amen. So, so really, uh, the, the greatest commandment is in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, and it's to love your Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's not an easy one. I was talking to my, my daughter last night about love. And I said to her, I said to my daughter last night, I said, we need to be loving people. And she said, it's hard to do that at times. <laughs> Christina said, it's hard. She says, everybody? She said, everybody? I said, you got to love everybody. And she said, ah, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard to love people. Why? Because some people are hard to love. Yeah. Have you ever dealt with anybody that's hard to love? Yes, don't, keep looking straight ahead. Don't look at your spouse. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever dealt with people that are hard to love? Sometimes they're people that are just, they're crusty people. They're, just, they're negative people. They're people that's always looking on the downside of life. It's hard to love negative people, isn't it? I mean, it's easy to love positive people. But negative people, you just don't even want to be around. You're like, they're hard to love. Why? Because misery loves company. So if somebody's miserable, what do they want? They want you to be miserable too. Right? And so sometimes when miserable people come in my presence, I got to exit stage left. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I got to take. I, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you got problems. All right, I'm out. Amen. If you got problems, the next thing I'm going to do is say, let's pray. Because prayer will take care of problems. The reason why we got problems is because we're not praying enough. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody today. So, so listen, if you got problems, then start praying. If you start praying, you won't have any problems. You say, but I'm going to still have problems. No, you're going to give your problems to God and you're going to be rejoicing. Amen. Amen. In other words, you're not going to be focused on the problem. See, the problem why we have problems or why we're negative or why we're downcast because we're looking at the problem. You've been looking at it way too long. No, you need to look at the promise. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Somebody say, I'm going higher in God. No matter what it looks like. So the acid test of love is loving people. So, so really, if you say you love God and you're not loving people, then you're not really loving God. Oh, I'm preaching today. Because if you're nasty to people, then your, your love for God is not that strong. Amen? you got to love people. Amen? What the world needs more is love, more love. I don't know what that... I, I, that's what we need is more love. See, if people are going to... If people are going to love your, our God, they're going to have to love you. Mm. Amen. God. They're going to have to love who you are. Because people want to be a part of, of you. If they don't love you, they probably won't love your God either. Mm. Amen. Amen. So a new commandment, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And this is interesting. He would tell his disciples this. Because think about this. Jesus walked with 12 guys and they all had different opinions. You know, people have opinions. You know, people think differently. Not everybody thinks the same way. We want everybody to think our way. And when they don't think our way, they're dumb, right? <laughs> we criticize why they don't, why don't they think like me, you know? Well, everybody's different. Some people like chocolate ice cream, and some people like vanilla ice cream. And some people like chocolate and vanilla. Yeah, amen. I like it all. I, just give me ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Just give me some ice cream, amen? So, so, but, but people have opinions. But, but don't be so opinionated. Oh, I'm preaching today. Don't, be, don't think that your opinion's better than somebody else's opinion, unless it's backed with Scripture, amen? So we got to love people. The acid test is loving people. We see here Jesus expects us to love. It says here, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples 
if you have love for one another. So the love that we have for one another reveals that we are the disciples of Jesus. And it says here that we're supposed to love like Jesus loves. And Jesus is not just suggesting, he's commanding us to love. It's a commandment to love. And that commandment to love him and people, it, it satisfies all the laws ever put in the Bible. All the laws, there's over 600 laws that were put in. I think they made up 600 laws. We, we got the Ten Commandments. But if you're walking in love, you're going to fulfill all the, all the laws of the commandment. And if you're walking in love, then the devil has no power to attack your life. The only way the, the devil can get into your life if you walk out of love. That opens the door for the devil to attack your life. Can I get a witness in the house today? So we have to, it's a command, not a suggestion, to walk in God's love. Amen? And we have the power to walk in God's love. You say, I do? Yeah, because you got God living on the, on the inside of you, and God is love. So if God is living on the inside of you, and He's love, which is the Holy Spirit is abiding in you, the Holy Spirit is always prompting us to do right. It's our flesh that's always prompting us to do wrong, or to get back, or to get even. One person used to say, I don't get mad, I get even. Have you, ever, have you ever heard that? I don't get mad, I get even. Just wait until you go to sleep, right? No, you know, no, that's not how we respond when people do th wrong things to us. We don't, get, we don't get even, we don't even the score. No, God can even the score. You, you turn the other cheek, and that's not easy. But, but the Bible says, if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. Wow, that's, that, that's, that's strong. But that's, that's God's word. It's, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that will give us the power to turn the other cheek. Can I get a witness in the house today? So, so, so the love of God will constrain us from slapping people that slap us. <laughs> Have you ever been constrained? Have you ever wanted to slap somebody? Oh, my Lord Jesus. Have you ever been there? Yes, it was this morning with my spouse. No, listen. <laughs> you, the love of God constrains us. Say, the love of God constrains me. That means the love of God will keep us in check. Amen? I love this because, because love, if you want to boil, man, if you want to boil love down, it, I, I see love in two ways. Are you ready for this? I see love in giving and forgiving. Amen. That's how I see love. Love is boiled down. If you want to boil down, what is love, Pastor? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> don't hurt me no more. <laughs> what is love? Okay, love is giving. <laughs> I'm having too much fun over here. <laughs> and forgiving. Anybody ever heard that song, What is Love? Don't hurt me, baby. Don't hurt me. Amen. And so, and so love is giving. Amen. I love John 3.16. That's one of my favorite scriptures. In the, I got a lot of them. You better have a lot of favorite scriptures. Amen. John 3.16. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm witnessing. And I said, man, you're a Christian. Oh, yeah. Do you know what John 3.16 and they'd give me a look like a deer in the headlight. You don't know what John 3, 16 says? No, what does it say? Man, that's, that's the, if you don't know John 3, 16, I don't know if you're saved. Amen. Glory to God. I, I, I've ministered enough here. But some people have never even heard of John 3, 16. And John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish die, be separated from God, go to hell for an eternity of torment, but be saved, glory to God. For God so loved the world that he gave. So the most greatest uh, expression of God's love is giving his son Jesus. Amen. Can I get a witness now today? And the most greatest expression of Jesus' love for us is giving his life for us. But not only just giving it to us, having his life sacrificed even to the cross. Amen. To be sacrificed so that we could have 
the same relationship. Now, now I'm going somewhere this morning. The same relationship, the same relationship that Jesus has with God, you can have this. Mm, I'm, I'm going a little higher today. You can have the same relationship that Jesus walked with God. You can walk with God the Father the same way. Your love for, for God can be the same as Jesus' love for God. Come on. Amen. I know I'm bringing that bar kind of high today. But can you love like Jesus? Yes. You better believe it. You can love like Jesus. Amen? And, and forgiving scripture, I love this. This is Jesus when he, when he instituted again the Lord's Supper. In Matthew 26, 28, it says this. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I love that. So, so we're talking about giving and forgiving. And the blood of Jesus was poured out... Why? So that we can be forgiven. Amen. And if you're forgiven, another, uh, another uh, place in the Bible, Peter is preaching in the book of Acts. He's preaching to all these people that just crucified Jesus uh, 50 days earlier. And, uh, and, he's, and, and, and they, they're saying, what must we do to be saved? And Peter says to them in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, we see here the pinnacle of our salvation is forgiveness of sins. Amen. Think about that. In other words, your sins are washed away, baby. In other words, you're innocent people. In other words, there's no condemnation. In other words, you're walking in full throttle. Can I get a witness in a, in a house today? In other words, there's nothing for you to be ashamed about. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has washed away past sins. And the present sins, we keep judging ourselves and making sure we're walking in love towards God and love towards people. And when we do that, the, the, His grace keeps us clean. Keeps us washed clean from all unrighteousness. I love this, that, that Jesus' kind of love is a love that sacrificed himself for others. If we're going to walk in Jesus' kind of love, we got to be willing to sacrifice. Oh, did you have to use that word sacrifice, Pastor? You have to be willing to sacrifice what? Some of your time, some of your talent, some of your money. What? Into the kingdom of God. Sacrifice. Nobody wants to hear the word sacrifice anymore. Jesus was the greatest sacrifice, glory to God. So, so, so I love this. It says in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that to lay down one's life for his friends. You know, you know we're, we're, we're celebrating people that served in the military and there are a lot of people that they go up, up in D.C. There's all these gravestones of all these people that served and died for our country. And the people that died for our country, they laid down their life for our freedom. Don't ever take your freedoms for granted. Don't ever take for freedom that we live in America. Do you know how many people are trying to get to America? They're not trying to break into China. They're not trying to get into Russia. They're not trying to go over to Mexico. They're not trying to uh, defect. They're, Americans are not trying to defect to, to Canada or, or to Mexico. No. Why? Because this, this, this nation's built on, on Christian values. And it's built on freedom. Amen. And, 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 and the blood of Jesus has set us free. And the blood of the soldiers that served in the military has caused this country to be free. And we don't want to take our freedoms for granted. Amen. Glory to God. And so I love this. And Jesus' love, amen, is a, is a humbling love that obeys God no matter what. In Philippians 2, 5 and 8, it says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about love here. I'm talking about a mindset. Somebody say mindset. mindset. So you've got to have a mindset here. And he's saying, let your mind, uh, it, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, a mindset being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Remember, Jesus would, keep, would do miracles, and he would tell people, don't tell anybody I did this. He would do a miracle. He said, don't go tell anybody. 
And in some and in, remember they tried to make Jesus, they tried to take him, they wanted him to be king. And remember, he just he just went away from the crowd and hid. Do you remember that? I don't know if you remember that story. But they were trying to make Jesus king after he fed the 5,000. They wanted, they wanted to make him king. And he went into a solitude place. Why? Because it wasn't his time. And then it says here, uh, uh, even though he is a king, and he's king of kings and lord of lords, and it says here, he, he considered robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. So we have to have a mindset, a servant heart's mindset, and a heart of humility mindset like our Savior Jesus. He is the king of humility. Amen. The devil's the king of pride. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying today? So, so Jesus, and we need to be humble people. Walking humbly before our God. Not getting too high and mighty about ourselves or our status in life. Maybe we have some things, but don't put your faith in those things. Put your faith in God. Amen. Just because you got some nice things. Maybe you have a nice place to live, a nice vehicle to drive. Maybe you have, you know, some nice things, but put your faith and trust in in God. Here, it says here that the kind of love we need to walk in is in Philippians 2, 1 and 4. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one accord of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each esteem others better than himself? What, what are you talking about, Paul? He's saying that others, let, let others take the high road. In other words, let, let other people's opinions, you know, if you're going out to eat, one wants to go to Burger King, the other wants to go to McDonald's, you kind of want to go to Burger King, they want to go to McDonald's because the french fries are better, and you just say, okay, we'll go to McDonald's. You prefer your brother or your sister over your own desires. What? Are you serious? Yeah, because Jesus preferred us. Over his desire of not going to the cross. Because Jesus did not want to go to the cross, but he did it anyway. We were on his mind when he was hanging on the cross. We were on his mind while he was getting whipped. We were on his mind. Why? Because he knew that this sacrifice would bring a family into the kingdom of God. God loves family. I'm going to say it again. God loves family. He loves your family. Your family's not going down the road. You say, well, I beg the difference. No, because you're praying for your family. You're keeping the grace of God on your family. No matter what it looks like in your family, they're turning around. Do you believe that today? Amen. So Jesus demonstrated his love. And we need to walk, you know, really one of his greatest examples of demonstrating his love was at the Last Supper. In John 13, 3 and 5, it says here, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God, was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girded himself, and poured the water in a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel which he was girded. So, so we see here that Jesus... Uh, this is really going to be the last time that he's going to be with his disciples before he goes get, to get crucified, before he's arrested. And the, one of the last things that Jesus does with his disciples is that he goes and he washes their feet. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is washing the disciples' feet, a lowly servant's job. And he washes their feet. Of course, Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet. <laughs> Cause Jesus, because Peter was kind of, you know, he always had, the, he had a problem. He had the foot in the mouth problem. He was always putting his foot in his mouth. What does that mean? He was always speaking things he shouldn't be saying. 
He was, he was kind of prideful. You're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash my feet, your feet, you have nothing to do with me. And he said, wash my face and my hands. And Jesus said, you talk too much, Peter. <laughs> no, Jesus didn't say that. But he said, no, just your feet. And, and the reason why Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he said, he, said, he said, I wash your feet and I'm teacher, glory to God, and I should be honored. But, but we wash one another's feet to show that we honor one another. And so Jesus said, do this likewise. Wash others' feet. In other words, we're supposed to be looking out for one another. We're supposed to be praying for one another. We're supposed to, see, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor? Love covers all. Well, you see your brother sinning, start praying for them. Cover them yeah. with love. Amen. And sometimes you might need to talk to them. Yes. And say, I see you going in a direction that's not good, man. You need to turn around. Amen. Do a 180. Yeah. And, 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 you, and you talk to them in love. It, always in love. You always correct in love. You, you bring discipline in love. Right. You, 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 you plead with people. Man, don't go that way. You, 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 in love. The Holy Spirit pleads with us to stay walking with God. Amen. And I love this. And I've never seen this before. Are you ready for a fresh revelation today? Amen. I love this because I never realized this, that the, a lot of the miracles that Jesus did wasn't just for individual people for their own healing or their own deliverance. I noticed that the, a lot of the main miracles, we talked about the miracle uh, last week of the centurion that came to Jesus and said, speak the word. Remember that? And, and remember, but, but the centurion didn't come for himself. He came for a servant. So it's something about our love for others causes the power of God to work. Oh, I'm preaching now. So, so, gee, so, so this guy, this centurion, was not so focused on himself. He was focused on his servant, and God healed his servant. And I love this because as I started doing a study last night, I noticed Jairus had a daughter that was sick unto death. And he came, to, and, and Jairus, in Mark 5, 23, 23, came to Jesus. He, 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 he came to Jesus on behalf of his daughter. Are you, what I'm saying to you today, are you coming to God on behalf of somebody else? Are you coming to God in prayer, asking God to move on somebody else's life? Are you believing God for restoration for your family and your friends and your neighbors? And so here, Jairus, he, he, he said he was a leader, and he, and, he, and he said, my daughter is dying, and please come put your hands on her, and she will be healed. We know that, that Jairus' daughter died in the process of, of, of Jesus coming to his house, but Jesus, you know what? Death is not final when Jesus is around. Amen. And I'm going to say this to you today. If the Word of God is still in you, no matter what the thing may look dead, God can resurrect anything. Amen. And then, and so, so even though the devil, the devil thought, I got him, I, I killed the daughter. No, Jesus is, a, is the resurrection of life. And so I love that. And then you have the Canaanite woman who, who, who came to Jesus and she was outside the covenant of Israel. She was not a Jewish person. And she didn't really have a right to receive the blessing when Jesus was walking down here. And remember that Jesus called her a dog. He said, he said it's not good for me to give the healing children's bread to the dogs. And because he was saying, you know, she was outside the covenant. And she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat from the crumbs of the master's table. When she said that, she said, I, yeah, I may be a Canaanite woman. I might be outside the covenant of Israel. I might not have any real reason to have the blessing in my life, but I'm coming to you in faith, believing you. Now I'm bowing myself to you because I'm calling you Lord, and I'm saying that you are my Lord, and I don't need the bread. I just would just take the crumbs. 
How many people are willing just to take the crumbs of God's blessings, not just for your life, but for somebody else's life in your family, in your neighborhood, whoever you know. Man, I'm constantly praying for my family. I'm constantly praying for my neighbors. Why? Because I'm believing that my prayers are making a difference. And that Canaanite woman said, you know, even, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And Jesus said, great is your faith. You, daughter, is healed the, and at that very moment. And Jesus was moved by her faith. And God can be moved by your faith. And then we know this, that a father had love for his son. He had small faith. And in Mark 9, it talked about that he tried to get his disciples, uh, uh, Jesus' disciples, to cast out this demon out of his son but they couldn't do it. You all know the story. And so he came to Jesus and said to Jesus, Jesus, can you do anything? And Jesus said, only believe God and you will see a miracle. And he put it back on this guy. And the guy said, well, I don't have much faith. He said, help my unbelief. And see, I'm going to say this, that God's grace is bigger than your faith. God's grace is bigger than your faith. And this man had little faith, but, but, but God had big grace. And Jesus set that boy free regardless of the smallness of this man's faith. Why? Because God's grace is bigger than our faith to stand in. Do you believe that today? I'm telling you, I'm bringing in some truths here. That, that when we start believing God... And we're believing God for others. I'm talking about other people. I'm talking about your faith can set your family free. Not just yourself, Lord of God. It's not just... Somebody say, it's not just about me. It's not just about you. Amen? It's about everybody we come in contact with. Amen? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Underline that. Some of you might need to underline that. It's not easily angered. Amen. It, this, another one you need to underline. It keeps no record of wrongs. Oh. What? Love keeps no record of wrongs. What does that mean? That means you're not adding up every bad thing that somebody does to you. You don't have a little list here. You're right now. Oh, man, okay. And they did this to me, and they did that to me, and they did... No, no. Love keeps no records of wrong. My mom would say to me, that's a hard one. You know? <laughs> My mom's real honest. We, we talked sometimes spiritually. She said, that's a hard one, not keeping records of wrong. Amen? And uh, love does not delight in evil, but, <laughs> but delights in truth. Amen? Love, listen, love always protects. Love doesn't expose. Mm. Come on. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love perseveres. Amen? So, so when we're walking in love, and really the forgiving part of love is really the key that I want to get into. This is the giving part of love. But the forgiving part of love, when Peter came to Jesus in Matthew, said, how many times should I forgive my, my brother? Seven times, and Peter thought he was being really benevolent. Uh, Peter thought he was being benevolent in the amount of times he could forgive. And Jesus said, not seven, but seven times 70. What? 490 times in a day? You mean you want me to forgive 490? Nobody has that kind of faith. You know, it takes faith to forgive. Amen. I'm going to say again, it takes faith to forgive. And then, then Jesus said, well, the, let me tell you a story. And he says, the kingdom of God is likened. Whenever Jesus says, the kingdom of God is likened, you better pay attention. Amen. You better pay attention. He said, the kingdom of God is likened to this man that owes his king lots of money, millions, of, billions of dollars. Really, this man could not pay. And he comes to the king and the king says, pay up or go to jail. And the man begs mercy. And the king says, I will release the debt. You're totally free. You're debt free. And then the man leaves and finds somebody that owns uh, that owes him a little bit of money, say a hundred dollars. And then he sees this man, and he sees the man. And he says, "Pay me all that you have." And he started choking the man. Think about that. 
And the man says, oh, he did the same thing. I'll pay you whatever I can. I'll get the money to you. He was in the same position earlier. And why he's choking this man. And he, said, and he called for the cops to come and throw him in jail. And then the servants of the king heard about it, told the king, and the king said, bring this man back in. This is interesting because sins can be taken off of us, but can sins be put back on us? According to this one, the king said, all that debt is back on you. Mm, that's powerful. So what, what, what puts sins back on us is unforgiveness. Oh, my Lord Jesus. That's a pretty strong word today. In other words, if we, you know, there's lots of sins out here. You know, there's the sin of murder. Would you say well, that's probably one of the highest sins, murder? Would you say murder is pretty high up? Adultery is pretty high sin, you know, some of these sins. But, you know, murder is forgivable. You know, adult, adultery is forgivable. You know, God, God forgave David. Remember David murdered Uriah? Remember that? David was a murderer. We don't think about that. Man after God's own heart. Yeah, but he killed Uriah, <laughs> right? But God forgave him. But there was a curse that came after that, right? Because he did that, there was, there was bloodshed in his family. There was, you know, retribution that came after that. But, but this is the, the thing is, is that if murders, you know, can be forgivable on that, what is the sin that's not forgivable? Unforgiveness. <clears throat> what? It says here in Mark 11, it says, whatever you stand praying, Mark 11, 25, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. But if you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. That's powerful. You say, well, well I'm exempt from that rule. No, you're not. Nobody's exempt from unforgiveness. We're not exempt. Remember the Lord's Prayer? And I'm trying to close down here. I know it's pretty strong today. What I'm trying to say, you better start forgiving. Amen. Yeah. Wait, well, Pastor, what's the... How, I, I'm having a hard time letting this thing go. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm ha having a hard time letting... The, well, you got to let it go. You just got to let it go. Amen. Hey, how, how do I do that? You pray for those that did you wrong. Right. Can I pray hellfire that fall on them, Pastor? That they die early? No. You don't pray like that. You pray that God would bless them, that God would bring them out of the snare of the devil, that God would bring them into a place where they're walking in true repentance. You know, forgiveness is not just letting it go. I'm not saying just let it go. You can. The Bible says uh, in Matthew, if your brother sins against, against you, go and tell him his fault. Matthew 18, 15 and through 17. Between you and him alone. And if he hears you, you have gained your brother. So if somebody does something wrong with you, it, it, to you, that doesn't mean you just let it go and walk away. No, you talk to them. You did me wrong here. You, there was something you did here, and, and you need to bring, try to bring reconciliation. In other words, you need, you need to go ahead and, 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 and talk it over and, and bring some reconciliation in there. And then the Bible says if your brother doesn't hear you, if they laugh at you, say, ah, then, then you talk, you bring more people, elders in the church, talk to them about what they did and to try to bring some reconciliation. Amen? And so, and so, 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 so you want to bring reconciliation into the situation. And sometimes you have to talk to people about the issue. Mm. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, when you tell somebody about the issue that they have, that you have with them, it may not make them feel good, but it makes you feel a whole lot better. <laughs> have you ever felt a lot better when you let them know in a loving way that they crossed the line? Amen. Amen. Sometimes you have to let people know in a loving way. Did I say a loving way? A loving way, not in an arrogant way, not trying to point your finger at them, but in a loving way. So the goal is, Reconciliation. So what, what, what's, what's the more to, to this message today? Love is giving and forgiving. Love is being sacrificial in your giving. Love is being sacrificial in your forgiving. Yes, maybe they don't deserve. You know, no, you, know, you can say they don't deserve to be forgiven. No, you don't deserve to be forgiven. Amen. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus we would have no relationship with the Father because the blood wipes away our sin. Sin separates us from God's love 
and His mercy. And when the separation wall of sin is broken down because of the love of God and the blood of Jesus, we'll have pure fellowship, not just relationship. See, you can have relationship with God but not have fellowship with Him. You can have relationship with people but not have fellowship with Him. God wants you to move from relationship to fellowship. And if you're, if you're walking in the light as, as, as He is in the light, then that means you're walking in love. The light is, 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 signifies the love. When you're walking in the love, like he's in love, because you can just change that out to love, light and love go hand in hand. God is light and God is love. When you're walking in the light, this is in, in 1 John, when you're walking in the love as he's in love, then you have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus will cleanse you and wash you from all, not some, all unrighteousness. So love is the paramount spiritual force that will get you into the freedom and the abundant life that Jesus paid for you to walk in. Did you receive it this morning? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you that you're helping us to walk in love. And the first key is giving. The second key is forgiving. And in forgiving, you said to pray for those that despitefully use you and do good to those. And Father, I'm asking that you'd help us to walk in love towards the unlovely, to release any ought or any hurt. And Father, I thank you for every person here that's in this audience and those that are watching and listening. And perhaps you know you need to release some, some things. Maybe you have some ought in your heart towards Maybe God or maybe others, because you can be mad at God. I'm going to ask you to release that today. Just say, just say, dear God, I'm releasing all unforgiveness in my life towards anyone in Jesus' name. And perhaps you never received Christ. Now is the time to do that. Pray this prayer after me and, re and receive it in your heart. Say, dear God, I believe Jesus, you died on the cross. For my sins, I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. And Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that for the first time, I believe you got born again. Connect with us online at clifechurch.org and we'll get some information on how you can move forward in your walk with Christ.